2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 10. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Before I begin tonight, I would like to take and remind you that whenever we read our Bibles, it's important that we remain, this is a word we've learned maybe a year ago now around here, that we are hermeneutically correct. Hermeneutically correct is something that we've heard in Pentecost a lot. We've always told the Baptists that you take and need to read the scriptures before it and the scriptures after it to see if that is really what is being said. But if, if I, as I've grown up and begin to watch, unfortunately, a lot of times after we get them to come, we've got them to come to church, we have told them to stop doing that and just simply listen to us and we'll tell you what the Bible means. But I want you to know that it's important that we take and keep everything in the same order that is being spoken of. Now, the Bible doesn't just jump all over the place madly like oftentimes we've been taught it does. But it has to stay in the same order. We've got to keep things in the same perspective of what's being taught. I've also been told growing up the way to interpret your Bible is to interpret it physically unless it clearly indicates that it should be interpreted spiritually. Can I point out to you tonight that from here, well, maybe not quite to here. There's concordances and stuff like that. But from Genesis 1 to Revelations 22, that this is a spiritual book, first of all. First of all, it's a spiritual book. And can I say tonight that being a spiritual book, first of all, it should be interpreted spiritually unless indicated to simply be physical. And oftentimes I've found as I've read my Bible, the things that I thought was physical, later on as I begin to study deeper into the Word of God, I found out that they weren't physical at all. There may have been a physical thing there, but the, the still the message that was there was a spiritual message that begins to talk to us. At first glance, you would simply think that the Garden of Eden was simply a physical message. But then later in life, I begin to discover that the thing that was man was actually barred from was not a beautiful garden. but they was barred from a walk with God. Me and a man at work got in an argument over it one day and he said, no, it was a garden. And I said, if it's a garden, show me a garden in the world that's barred with two cherubims that you can't get past and get into. And he said, well, you can't see it. I said, I thought you said it was physical. People have a hard time understanding physical and spiritual. Adam come out of the garden and, and he took and made himself clothes of fig leaves. And I thought by the pictures that they showed us in Sunday school that they just simply didn't have enough clothes on. One leaf here and Eve had three leaves on it. But later I found out that this wasn't a physical thing. Adam and Eve were trying to cover their own sin. 
And I have got this gut feeling, there's no way I can prove it, but I have got this gut feeling that when Adam, uh, God walked into the garden and seen their attempt to cover their own sin, that they probably looked like a sniper out in the bush. They were probably covered, Brother Price, from head to toe with leaves and trying to just blend in a, into their surroundings. Because they were trying to, to cover for their own sin. And I always thought that God give them that clothing of animals because it covered more. But come to find out, there had to be a blood sacrifice for that sin now to push it ahead one year. Because there was a, plan, a spiritual plan of God from the very beginning. Why? Because this book is a spiritual book. And unfortunately, we haven't kept it hermeneutically correct. We read in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 10, Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake. I think probably what Paul was trying to say was I oftentimes put up with a lot of nonsense. I think that was probably included in with what he was saying. That they may also obtain the salvation. Remember today that Paul is talking about obtaining salvation. This is the main purpose of what he is writing here in 2 Timothy. I found that from cover to cover, the main purpose of this entire Bible is that we might obtain salvation. The old covenant simply points to a better way. It pushed their sins ahead. Why? So that they might obtain salvation through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And verse 11 says, It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with Him, we shall also live with Him. If we be dead with Him. Now he is not talking about where Brother Thompson is tonight. That's not where he's talking about if we be dead in Him. We are back again in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and we are talking about the death, burial, and resurrection. This gospel saving message that the church has got today. When we go to Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, when Peter stood up and talked in the day of Pentecost and preached the very first sermon, and he said, you must repent. What was he saying? He was saying, if you will simply die in Christ... And then he turned around and said, then you must be baptized in the name of Jesus. You, if you've died with Him, you must be buried with Him. You must be buried with Him. And then he said, then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You know what? This is the message of the death, burial, and resurrection of man. And when Paul begins to talk about it here in 2 Timothy, it says, For if we be dead with Him, if we've come to a place of repentance and told God that we are sorry, The Bible tells us that Jesus is the high priest. The high priest is the top dog. The man in charge. And it tells us that through Jesus Christ, our high priest, that we have an advocate with the Father. 